Well, good afternoon. The Audible is on the air. Somehow I feel like I got run over by a train. It still keeps running over me over and over and over again. If you're watching us on Periscope, we appreciate you having us uh, having us in your homes. And you can go ahead and send your uh, questions via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can watch us on a rebroadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page beginning tomorrow. And you can see us on MiamiDolphins.com. Joining me, John Conjemi. And John, boy, this is one of those games, you know, you're riding a six-game winning streak, feeling pretty good about your football team. But you knew one – you know, you know a couple things going in going into that game yesterday in Baltimore. One, that Baltimore is going to be ready to play. It was a very important game for them. It was a very important game for the Miami Dolphins. And, and you're playing in a building where they don't lose very often in, in December. And you get into those December months when the games count. And, and quite frankly, it was one of those games that I thought going into it where, hey, we'll kind of see what kind of Dolphin football team we have now, knowing that the, what was on the line, where you were playing, who you were playing against, a team that this team seems like forever has had problems with, with the Baltimore Ravens. But for them to come out and, and, and take that drive down the field, that opening drive down the field, I think they had eight plays, six first downs, and the touchdown, uh, that, 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 was a, that, was a, that was a shot to the gut early on. And I don't think this team. I don't think the team ever recovered from that. Well, the Dolphins didn't respond, that, yeah. that's for sure. And it was one of those games where the Baltimore Ravens led from the beginning and didn't look back. And yeah. Miami couldn't do anything about it. You know, they couldn't find any execution offensively to stay on the field. I, I think the defense was exposed for 40-plus plays yep. again in the first half. It was really reminiscent of games that were in the beginning of the season. Not so much the score, yep. but the way the games were played. You know, the, the offense couldn't put a whole lot together. There were some three and outs. There was some bad chemistry some penalties some penalties that you know you'd make a play field goal the roller coaster effect you know it seemed like one mistake led to another and the ravens didn't make any i mean they threw the football they came in a really aggressive game plan they threw the football 11 out of 11 times on first down uh, to start the football game and that's not really a joe flacco led team they came out they attacked the middle of the field the Dolphins couldn't stop it, so yep. the Ravens said, you know what, let's do a little bit more of that. And they were successful, and they came out to a, a 24 to nothing lead at halftime and never really looked back. Yeah. But the, the thing that really kind of upsets you is that you're used to winning now. The Miami Dolphins yes. and the fans are used to winning. They've become accustomed to really feeling good about themselves on Mondays. Well, you know, they got poked a little bit, and they didn't respond, and they didn't have any yep. answers. So that one has to, you know, you have to let that simmer for a little while, but they have to respond now because the month of December is on them and they haven't been in this position in a while. I like to see how they, they how go they through the next, that. the next game, you know, and how they can react against Arizona. Yeah, I could tell by looking at everybody's face, coaches, players, everybody after that game, that one hurt. Yeah. It hurt. It was embarrassing. There were a lot of different mo- emotions going through from that football game. Um, and they've got to find a way to bounce back, and we'll find out. You know, every 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 week, you know, you got 16 games and 16 weeks out of the year, you find out a little bit more about your football team. Sometimes you find out things you don't want to hear or you don't like, or other times you find things that have been very good about your team. We've been finding that for six weeks, and then you get slugged in the face on Sunday. Now see how this team, if they can get up off their, off their knees and, and come back against a very good Arizona team that's loaded with talent, they got a great front uh, defensive front, put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. They got great coverage guys in the backside that uh, can really, really cause some problems for you. Offensively, they've been struggling a little bit, but uh, this is going to be another another huge test for this football team, where they're going to have to forget about what happened on Sunday, come back and see if they can get it going back at, at home at Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, this, you know, if this football team wants to stay alive in the playoff chase, and I, I'm with them, it's a game to game type of thing. But boy, it's got to start this Sunday, John. You can't. You, you can't let this game drag you down for the rest of the season. Can't let it beat you twice. That's exactly what head coach Adam Gay said in his postgame press conference to you. Uh, yeah. You know, you can't let this game linger on and let it beat you next Sunday at home at Hard Rock Stadium. And I think it's a lot to do with the Arizona Cardinals. Yes, they have to come up with a great game plan on both sides. They have to be special on special teams. Yeah. But I think it's more about the Miami Dolphins. I mean, you take a look at the way the game unfolded against Baltimore yesterday, and they were just off. They were off in coverage they were off on target and throwing yeah. the football they didn't couldn't get to the line of scrimmage without Jay Ajayi breaking two tackles for a six yard gain there was a lot of different things that happened in that game that hasn't happened through that six game winning streak uh, they weren't able to fight through and get and write themselves to be able to come back and be able to 
be in a position to fight back on yeah. that day. So, yeah, I, I think it's more about the Miami Dolphins taking a hard look at themselves and what they need to do uh, in all three phases and then putting that in, into a game plan against the Arizona Cardinals. No doubt. And, John, one of, one of the disturbing things for me in the game was – Watching the Baltimore Ravens, not even giving a second thought on four fourth downs, two fourth down situations, fourth and one, fourth and two, fourth and two. They didn't even not bat in it great up. spots. They did not not, on the not in great in, in spots where normally you wouldn't even consider it, just because of field position and, and where it puts you if you didn't right. make it. I think there was one there was one situation that was like like a fourth and eight, and, and you looked over and they were considering going for it again on, on a yeah. fourth and eight. And you know if 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 I'm one of the defensive players that. that it sticks with you. I, I'm upset about that. Yeah. And I'm upset that somebody felt that way about our defense to go ahead and do that to us. And I'm going to do, you know, do whatever you can this week, try to make sure that whoever you play doesn't think they can do it. But now look at you've had the San Francisco 49ers. They'd attack the middle of the field very successfully against the Dolphins. You've had the Ravens do it unmercifully against the Dolphins. So you know what you're going to see from Arizona. There's a you, number 11 you, that's going to be crossing you, no the field. Question. And there's a couple of 15s going to be crossing yeah. the field. Well, going to be a lot of action between the, the numbers <laughs> in this room, right. no doubt about that. You know, and I, that's one thing the Miami Dolphins have not been able to uh, really find a way or control yeah. the middle of the football field. You know, you've got to be able to, as a linebacker, you have to be able to kind of move routes towards where your safeties are, yeah. towards your protection. And, and they really haven't been able to get a whole lot of hands on uh, tight ends or slot yeah. receivers or be able to reroute guys to get them where they want to in coverage when they're playing zone. Uh, even in man-to-man -man coverage yesterday, the, a lot of the trail techniques running from one side of the field to the other were lacking. You know, there, yeah. there's got to be a lot, of, lot more accountability and a little bit more pressure in the pocket. That was the first game in a yeah. long time. We, we, even though Joe Flacco got rid of the football very quickly – Catching it, dropping, throwing. There was a lot of good passing uh, routes and schemes by the Baltimore Ravens, but you have to get a hand in the lane, in a passing yeah. lane at some point. You have to be able to create yeah. some kind of uncomfortable feeling yeah. for a quarterback. That never happened. It was anything, but it was pitch and catch all day yeah, long. It was, it was, one of those it was kind seven of on seven. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hey, you're watching The Audible here. You're watching us on Periscope. You can send your questions in via Twitter. Just hashtag The Audible. You can see us on a rebroadcast starting tomorrow on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com. Let's go ahead and dig into some of these questions. Before we do, uh, Kiko Alonso, broken thumb, had surgery. I saw him in the beginning of the game. It must have happened early on, first or yeah, second yeah. play. Because he was grabbing that wrist early on in the football game. You knew something was going on there. Went in, had, a, had, it, uh, had it x-rayed, then put a cast on, came back out and played, had surgery on it. And, and look, th there's a lot of talk that he may play this Sunday. I, I, had that di I did that same thing myself, broke a thumb, had surgery on it on a Monday, and was able to play on a Sunday. So it's something that you can do if everything kind of goes Lines the right, goes the right, right way for you. So, uh, All right, let's go on. Let's move on. Here's some questions. Uh, at uh, Devin Gilhan. Uh, how do we improve our secondary play? Well, that, that's a, that's that's going to be the question, really. I think John, from now till the end of the season, because what you've seen over the last couple of games, people having that much success in the middle of the field, until you stop it, they're going to keep coming at you. So somehow the safeties and the linebackers need to find a way when they're in zone, they can't give too much, as much of a cushion. You talk about trail techniques with crossers, you can't give them that much space. And, and look, maybe it's somewhere, maybe you reroute a little more, maybe you do some of those things. But yeah, you know, there's no question the, the, the secondary play has to improve over these next four weeks. And, and to the Dolphins' credit, that's probably the first time I thought about Rashad Jones not yes. being in the lineup. There's been a lot of weeks where the Dolphins have done a pretty good job yeah. of, you know, Issa Kadu Abdul Abdus doing a good job of getting around and, and making plays around the line of scrimmage or in the secondary. Uh, you've had a number of guys, Rambo coming in and doing a yeah. pretty good job. You've had Michael uh, Thomas playing a number of different positions. Uh, but it has to be better. And I'm looking for maybe uh, – Xavier Howard to come back into yeah. the lineup uh, against the uh, Arizona Cardinals because there's multiple formations where you need guys out there and you may have a rotation going along on the cornerback spot. But the relationship between the linebackers depth and where the safeties are playing, that has to shrink. That has to become yeah. more of a difficult throw for a professional quarterback to make and it more reminiscent of the last couple of weeks than last yeah. than yesterday. Yeah, no doubt about it. <clears throat> uh, let's go uh, uh, at grad 06. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, yay, yeah, whatever. Hey, Bo, <laughs> hey, Bo, why didn't Miami send a scout to check the field conditions? That, that's players' responsibility. Players get out on the field, 
hour, hour and a half before the game. And one of the things they need, one of the things they need to do, especially on a, on a grass field, is go out and test the turf. And the other thing, John, because guys were slipping around a lot. There, there was a, there was no doubt that the field, the field condition affected uh, the Dolphins' play. Didn't bother the Baltimore Ravens now, but they're used to playing that field. And I know they had resodded part of that field yeah. too. And John, the other thing that kind of popped into my mind was, you know, yesterday was that day where they were wearing their cleats with the, uh, with the charities on them. Right. And New so, shoes. you know, if you've got a pair, if you got a certain pair of shoes made for that game, but they're not the right cleats and you wear them out there, you know, you're, it, stuck. you're, you're stuck. Or, you know? or you just say, well, you know I, what? I know Jarvis took his off and put right. on, put on a regular <laughs> pair of shoes about midway through the first quarter. I saw Joe Cimino, the equipment manager dive into the bag of, of shoes you and start to. pulling some out. I, yeah. You know, the first thing you do <laughs> as an away player is, Especially when the turf or the or the grass is questionable, yep. you kind of look on the other side. What do those guys wear? Yeah, you know, you go up to your guy and say, well, "Give me those molded cleats, or yep. give me the this you know half inch, or whatever it is." Yep. You're trying to mimic what the home team's doing because it didn't look like the Ravens had any difficulty in what they were trying to accomplish yesterday. So you're right; that might have played into it a little bit, Bo, with the the signature cleats but, but, you know, but that's, yesterday. Look, that, but that's, that's all excuses in the beginning that's, of the yeah, game. Yes, but after a while, you have to be able yeah. to adapt, and you have to be able to have pretty good balance. If you're on your edges, you're going to be there all day. And I certainly wouldn't. I, I wouldn't, certainly wouldn't say the way the Dolphins played yesterday or the way the game ended um, <clears throat> had anything to do with slipping on the field or, or those kind of things. Certainly, it was no. a, early in the game. It did some, but but when when push comes to shove, it, it really had very little consequence in, in what happened in the game. At, at enjoy my tea. Enjoy my tea. Oh, don't uh, mind if I do. There you go. There you go. You Jump on it, John, a little bit. Uh, will the Dolphins go back to their old ways? Well, I, you know that's. You know, that, that's what we got to see out of this football team. You know, they're, they're old, you know, if you want to talk about the old ways, the old ways would be that this team loses three of the next four games right. and they find themselves way on the outside looking in the playoff. Now, you know, Adam Gaze's job, and Adam, Adam's job began right after that game ended yesterday to get these guys, understand what they did in that game, understand what they did wrong, make the corrections today in the watching tapes, you know, be a little bit tough on them, you know, make sure they know how important this thing is, and then move on and get them out of the hole they dug themselves into and get back playing again. And, and, and this will go a long way to telling to, to giving us another another chance to see Adam Gaze and what he can do uh, as, as he stands in the podium there as head coach. One of the best things I thought he said after the game yesterday, Bo, was I hope my team has thick skin because yeah. they're going to need it. Yep. And, and But then we're going to move on. You're going to make the corrections. You're going to get things corrected that you need to going in to get in position to win on Sunday. And that's the only thing that they care about. Yep. You know, for the next game to matter, you have to beat the Arizona Cardinals. And there's no question about it. And and to talk, uh, uh, you know, to the question, the Miami Dolphins will fall into that trap if they go in, on to lose three of the next four. Yes. And, and end up with a meaningful game at home against the New England Patriots. That's the last spot that any member of this Miami Dolphin team wants to be in. So I look forward to a, a pretty good effort coming in yes. against an underrated by record team on Sunday. I, I think there's a lot of talent on the Arizona Cardinals, and I know how they're coached from Bruce Arians. So there's no question they're going to be ready to play on the road. The Dolphins have to match that to stay relevant in the month of December. They've got a little bit of a gauntlet here to, to end this. The, you know, you got, <clears throat> you got Arizona, you got Buffalo, you got the Jets, and you got New England, yeah. three AFC East opponents that are going to dictate where this football team goes. So we'll find out a lot more about what this football team has inside them as we go through this next uh, next four weeks. Uh, at Mario F. Mendez, it was a, mo it was the mo a moment of truth game and we don't have the talent level yet. You know, Mario, I, I can't argue that. I can't argue that. I think both sides, both football teams, stood on the sidelines before that ball was kicked off and knew how important that game was yeah. to them. Maybe a little bit more important game to Baltimore because they were a game behind, but more but important to the Dolphins because had they won that game, they would have taken one another tiebreaker and really put themselves in a good position uh, playoff-wise. And I know they're not looking down the road, but you do understand the magnitude. And I know Adam Gaze talked to him before the game about, hey, we'll see what you guys we'll see what you guys are all about right now. It's December when games count. Get the job done. So uh, we'll have to see. But uh, and I didn't you know. feel that way going into the game. I felt like this team had enough enough momentum built up yeah. and enough confidence in themselves that they were going to, it didn't matter who played, yeah. who they played on the other side of the yeah. field. They were going to match, you know, talent for talent. They were going to give it their best. Yeah. They didn't come close. I, I'm still a believer of this, Bo. I don't think this team has played their best football in oh, any, no. in any no. game so far <laughs> through, you know, we have four left, through 12 football games. I, I don't think that they've played right. uh, their best football. No. 
They haven't played a game where they won by 20 points or, or 15 points, 14, whatever, and you right. kind of breathe it in the end. No, no, there's no no question about it. But, look, you look at that Baltimore team. The Baltimore team had a lot of good players in that football team. That defense, that, that's one hell of a defense it they've is. got over there. And, and that offense, who's been, who was struggling to score points, you, you look at them and you, and you look at, you know, the, the players they've got, you know, they're, they're not a bad offensive football team, you know, when they get it, when they get it going. They're a good team, but yeah. they're not – they're not thirty-eight to six better. No, than no, Dolphins. no, 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 no. Uh, at uh, Adams three fifty-one, do you think coaches will have a different approach defense-wise? Well, they got to do something different. Uh, you know, the one thing they did that I tell you, the, the, the Dolphins did some good things in the game. I thought their first down offense was good. You know, they always found themselves, you know, plus five, plus four, plus six. It seemed like they were getting, you know, offensively. That's probably about the the one thing you could say about them offensively. They moved the ball up and down the field a little bit, but then either penalties, interception, missed field goal, all those things uh, mm-hmm. were a problem for them. But defensively, they, they've got to find some way to uh, – to change what's happened over the last two weeks, because the middle of the field can't be like a turnstile like it's been for the for the last two weeks. And they got to find some way. And John, you talked about it with Xavier Howard coming back. Look, he, if he can come back and play, you know, teams are in three teams are in three four wides most He's of the time anyway. Yeah. So so he'll get plenty of opportunities there. He may not start. He may not unseat those guys. You know, Lippet or uh, or Maxwell yet. But he's going to get plenty of playing time if he's ready to play. And all the indications as of now seem like he is ready to play. I think the matchup that's going to be very difficult for the Dolphins coming up against Arizona is when they do spread it out. Yeah. And Larry Fitzgerald gets in the yeah. slot. And you've got a smaller Bobby McCain going up against yeah. a Larry Fitzgerald who's very rangy, can catch anything with either hand that's close yeah. to framing his body. I think there's, there's going to be definite matchups that Arizona is going to want to take advantage of. And I think it's going to be imperative – that they find a way, the Dolphins do, to create some pass rush. They make that ball come out a little bit earlier than expected from Carson Palmer. I think those are the types of things that didn't happen against Joe Flacco because I don't think he was touched throughout the entire football game. And when you affect the quarterback and you affect the timing, that shrinks the windows and it shrinks where your coverage is coming from. And I I think that was really exposed yesterday. So I'm looking for that to change. You know, hopefully on Sunday uh, they find a way to put and create more pressure in the pocket. That too, and then on the other side of the football, they're going to have to find some way to uh, to to find some uh, find some space Explo- in that secondary. Explosive plays. They've they, got to get big somewhere. plays, and, and look, they got a you know Patrick Peterson, Tyron Matthew. Yeah. I mean, they've got a lot of talented players that play an aggressive style of defense. They're going to be attacking every football that's up in the air. So that's going to be you know, Calais Campbell. I mean, this is a football team that's they have talent. When you, you you look at the you look at their talent, you forget their uh, forget their uh, record. Record. Their talent. They got plenty of talent there. Uh, Alfred Ordonio. Let, uh, let me give you this first. Where if uh, you're watching the Audible on uh, Periscope, you can send your questions in. Just hashtag the Audible. You can also see us on uh, the Miami Dolphins Facebook page on a rebroadcast beginning tomorrow, and on MiamiDolphins.com. Uh, Alfredo Ordonio seven. When do you think Pouncey will play? I, I, that's a million dollar question out there. You know, he's saying his hip feels pretty good. I think he's got not a bothering. This week. Uh, but look, I, 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 it, it, the, the funny thing about Mike mm-hmm. Pouncey and where he's at right now, there's a chance he could play, could play on Sunday, and there's a chance he doesn't play again this season. You're right. I think those chances are probably 50 50 one way or another. And I think he's, he and the, he and the Dolphins team doctors are really the only ones that know about that. I think you're right. You know, you, you see him and, and he's walking around and you feel like, you know, he looks like, he looks good. Yeah, he looks, looks like great. he can play. Uh, but you're right. It may be a 160 minute game is all he has left for this yeah. season. Uh, before either something has to be done or he just shuts it down and completely gets some rest to get healthy again. So uh, only the doctors in the Miami Dolphins and Mike Pouncey yep. are going to ultimately make that decision of whether he thinks he can get it through the month of December or he needs one more week and then go through the AFC East gauntlet and try yep. to get through and get healthy for the Jets in, in Buffalo and New England. That would be the best case scenario. So we'll see how this week progresses as uh, the Dolphins take the field on Wednesday. That's right. Roberto, uh, one nine seven nine six nine. With a healthy healthy O line, can it carry the defense for the rest of the season? No, the defense got to step up and play. They, they've got to step up and they got to be better against the run, and they got to find find a way to get uh, uh, to, to get some coverage tightened up down there. And look, I, as I was saying earlier, the, the the defensive front, I thought they were getting pressure. They were they were they were moving. They were, they were collapsing the yeah. pocket. But Flacco was just getting rid of it so quickly. They didn't have. There were times where I thought that uh, Cam was just going to run his guy over and take him right into his lap. But then there's the ball out of the pocket and. Couldn't get any done. So, uh, you know, the defense got to do their job, but the offensive line, the offensive line can't can't help the defensive line. They, they, they've got to get the job done themselves. Uh, Moonjaw 6, Jim. From Moose Jaw? Moonjaw from Moonjaw Moon Moon 6, 
Jim. So I wonder if these are really like their whole Twitter names on there, or if Leon's misdoing. But uh, I, I, Leon I don't, has I don't, a tendency to spell poorly. I, I don't want to start. You know, we're, what do we, we start? Fifteen minutes late here. But that's well, he, I'm he, not going to get into that. He was seems like intercept. <laughs> seems like time. interceptions were bad throws rather than tight coverage. Well, look, the one tipped off the hand, a little behind Jarvis. Yeah. Tipped that, but as soon as that ball tipped up, you're like, oh, that's dead. Trouble. That's a dead meat there. And then the one to uh, the one to Devontae Parker in the ends of that. That was that was a good know, play. That was a, that was a great throw. Guy made a good play <clears> on the ball. I actually, I was standing almost by the end zone there. They both came, and both of them were in their stone. I didn't know who had the ball. Yeah. Till the till, you know till their guy rolled over and so I saw the ball. That was a great play. Was it, it Webb? was Webb. Uh, it they was came Webb, out of the middle came, of the defense. That came was all the way from the middle across the field. That was a good throw, and you know you're hoping that Devontae comes yep. down with that 50-50 ball. But I'm not so sure when he was running his route that he thought the safety was even going to be a factor be no, no. in the in the play. So you, you credit good defense, yep. but the the throw in the red zone. That's some, That's a ball that Ryan has not thrown over the no. past four or five, six weeks. And believe me, John, as we're sitting here right now, he wants. That, he still wants that ball right Abs- back. Absolutely. I think as soon as that ball left his hand, he went, uh-oh, here it that's goes. Not, he wanted to reel that one back yep. in because he had a play that he could make that, you know, maybe have taken points off the board. Yep. Um, Twitter, do you think we still have a chance to make the playoffs? Still have a chance to make the playoffs. They've got to win. They've got to win three. Somehow they got to find a way to win three games. And other things have to happen now. other things now. have that, to happen that's now. That's the problem. Yes. But I don't think you know they they win two more games. I don't think I don't think they get in with as a nine win team. I think somehow they've got to win three of these next four you, games. You have to get to ten, and yeah. then you have to uh, hope that Kansas City falters yeah. or Denver. And I think maybe with the schedule that Denver has, because they have Oakland, they have I think Kansas City head to head, and they have somebody else. Uh, you you kind of hope Denver falls away uh, to the wayside. Yep. So you know it's Kansas City or Denver, but I I think in in looking at the tea leaves and looking at the schedule, it's more about you know how can Denver fall off more yep. than Oakland or Kansas City. Yep. Uh, at, at I got game New Jersey, Bo. Were you ever part of a whooping like that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was, I was involved in plenty of them like that over my career. <laughs> you know, you some, look, some, you look playing a football. I, I can remember. I remember one year we. <laughs> One year with Coach Shuey, we went eight and eight, mm-hmm. and, and I thought that I thought the world was going to come to an end. And we played a game. I forget who we played. We played so bad. They just we got killed so bad. We're watching we're watching special teams film when the whole team would watch special team. And he got so pissed. He turned the lights, shut the projector off, turned the lights up, got him in front of her, and says, "Jesus." Jesus, Jesus! I can go over to Carroll City. I can go over to Carroll City, get twenty-two guys, and go eight and eight in this league. What do I need you guys for? That's so how we're bad. Actually paying you. <laughs> so yes, yes, I, I'm with you, John. Anybody who's played that's football right. for a length of time, you you've been in a game like this, and and I tell you what, John. Sometimes you get in those games, and it's just helpless. The harder you, you, you try in those games, yeah. the worse it gets. It right. just feels so yeah. helpless. No matter what you do, doesn't mm-hmm. work, and everything they do. It, it just comes works. out smelling like roses. You know, two plays, three plays, it's a score. You come yeah. back out, you go three and out, you throw a pick, you fumble the ball, yeah. they score. And all of a sudden you look up, it's 24 nothing. Well, well, look at the Dolphins. I mean, yeah. they take the ball down the field, eight plays, six first downs, touchdown. The Dolphins come back, put a nice little drive Absolutely. together, get a little yeah. drive going. They go, all right, kick the <clears> field goal, <throat> boom, clang. You know, you miss the field goal. So now, now, and then they go down, score a touchdown. And then, then they go, go eight, in. and then they go 18 eight, yep, plays. Yep. So that kind of takes the starch yep. out of you to start the football game. You get to halftime, <clears throat> and you're down, and you know your entire offensive game plan changes. Yep. Your defense hasn't been able to stop anybody, so you're thinking about trying to change what you've been doing, and it doesn't get better. Yeah, no, just, and then you come out, and, you know, you get down, and you, you know, Jay has that nice run, gets you down about the, you know, inside the 10-yard right. line. Boom, here comes a flag. That comes back, and you go, yep. There it is. It's going to be one of those games. No, no matter that. No matter what happens from here. At Hollywood eighty, who's going to cover Larry Fitzgerald? Well, whoever side he lines up on, I don't think they're going to be moving around with Larry Fitzgerald. Whoever's going to be out there is going to get the job. So it's going to be Lippett. It's going to be Maxwell. Hopefully, it's going to be a little Xavier Howard. Yeah, it might be and you talk about Bobby McCain, and maybe I'm Bobby McCain if he steps into the, <clears throat> that slot area. So uh, you know, it's going to be one of those. You know, the Dolphins don't chase receivers around. They line up and they're in their positions. They go so uh, wherever he lines up, that's it's, it's going to be your man. And I think that's the least uh, of the of the worries. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the way Arizona spreads the football out, and Floyd's a big receiver, and they've got other guys on the outside that can do damage. Uh, they're they're a very balanced offense, and if Carson Palmer has time, well, he can pick you apart yeah. just like Joe Flacco did. So that that's a problem. I, I think that where the change has to be made. You know, this is an aggressive style of defense that, you know, the Dolphins have played throughout yep. this stretch. They've been able to add one guy. They've been able to to do things. 
Can the linebacking core hold up number one yep. to stop the run, not make it a two-way go where Arizona has a lot of balance? Yep. And can they create enough big plays or, or turnover opportunities to shorten the field for the offense? I think, you know, if Arizona is going to control the football offensively, the Dolphins are going to be in trouble. So yep. that defense has to create some type of quick change, sudden change opportunities, and then the offense needs to take control. No doubt. Uh, Twitter question, will win three of four and the Ravens lost? Well, matter. That's, that's exactly it. <clears throat> but they've put themselves in a position where they do have to win three out of four games if they want any chance uh, of getting the postseason. At 38, Double D Lover. Bo, please share the importance of a, team, of a team such as we are and being resilient after this loss. Well, you've got to bounce back. I mean, look, if you, if you want to be <clears> – <throat> You don't bounce back after this loss. You know, at the end of the season, this 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 becomes oh, that's just another one, another Dolphin season, like another, another Dolphin team that that can't get the job done. You know, the, you know, this franchise needs a shift. This franchise and it, and it got a big shift during that six game winning streak with the Dolphins. All of a sudden, they're doing everything they need to do to win. They're making their own breaks. They're taking you know their their interceptions, right. takeaways, special team special scores, special team scores, all those things. They're doing the things that help you win football games. Sunday, they didn't do anything to help them win a football game. They've got to come back and, and get find a way to be that team that finds a way to win football games and get things going. If not, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of you know there's going to be a lot of a lot of grumbling during the off season. Oh, same old, same old, same old, and all the work that they did in the middle of the season will be for naught. Well, I think I felt it, and you probably have too, because you've been around the team as much or more than I have. I think there's been a, a confidence yes. in the way this team has carried themselves, the way this team approaches their work days and work weeks and, and Sundays. I think they're, you know, they have had their shoulders back a little bit and, and feeling good, not feeling over their skis, but feeling confident in what they've been able to put on tape and feeling good about the way they finished fourth quarters, a thing this team has not been able to come close to doing over the last four or five years. So, you know, you get you take a, a pretty good beating in Baltimore. This is the week. How do you respond? Yep. And I think that's where you tell if you've maybe taken a, a, a trip around that corner and riding the ship and riding the franchise and feeling a little bit good about who you are as a football team. Yeah, I, I think you know, no, no doubt about that. This team's got to find a way to to end the season off on a positive note. Uh, j- just to just for the look, this to make all know, that stuff count. Yeah, with with this Adam Gaze thing, you know, with with Adam, this is a long term thing. Oh yeah. And this is just the beginning. And look, I tell you, I, I, there was nobody more frustrated than him after the game. He kind of, he kind of felt helpless uh, after that football game, just with the way everything went. And, uh, and and I guarantee you, by the time he got off that plane, he was dead set on, on turning things around. So uh, we'll see if we can get it done. Light on the dome. Would Rashad Jones have made a difference covering the tight end? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Couldn't have hurt. Couldn't but have hurt. I, I, hurt, I don't yeah. know. And that day. <clears throat> Uh, one guy might not have been able yeah. to turn that game around. That was because yeah, you had linebackers covering him, you had safeties covering. Him. So it was a yeah. combination of people and zone and zone situations trying to cover, trying to you know keep them. Uh, you know, name anybody on that dress list that they were all affected. Yeah. They all had a, a, an effect, a negative effect, and not being able to respond and be able to change the way that game was going. I mean, it was just all Baltimore from start to finish. Yep, El Chapo Jr. They tried zone, then man, what happens when nothing is working? You know what happens, El Chapo, when nothing's 38 working? To Thirty-eight six. to six. That's, that's what, what happens. happens when. That's what happens when nothing's that's working. It. And then you and you wake up the next morning and feel like you just got clubbed in the side of the head. That's that's what. Uh, Man doesn't work, zone doesn't work. That's what it feels like. Fins up one. At fins up one, did Flacco and Kaepernick expose too many of our weaknesses? Can we fix it? Well, they certainly exposed the middle of the field as an area of concern for this Dolphin defense, and that's linebackers and that's safeties. And so um, it's out there. The teams, every team's going to look at these tapes, these last that's two right. tapes, and know exactly what they were able to do against it. Can we fix it? That that's the big question. And, and look. You're not going to change the talent. Talent's not going to change that much. Maybe you talk about Xavier and Howard coming back, but the talent's not going to change. So somehow within those meeting rooms, those defensive back meeting rooms, they've got to find a way, and I'll add to it the tight end meeting rooms, they've got to find a way to shore up the middle of the field and try to get the ball back out to the, to the sidelines. Yeah, you're bit. right, because those are the players that, you know, over the last – five or six weeks, you know, we haven't mentioned Tony Lippett. We haven't yep. mentioned Byron Maxwell. Those guys have been steering the football away from themselves. And when they have been attacked, they've been able to either come up with it or, or bat the football away and make a play on the, on the ball on the pass. Either it's, you know, plus 50, plus 40, plus 30, wherever that ball is, they've been able to do a good job. 
Now you take the template of Arizona uh, going into this game. Sure, it's a copycat league. You're going to see plenty of tight end seams. You're going to see plenty of all goes with maybe somebody checking down to separate the linebackers and the safeties and try to exploit that. I I would, if I was an offensive coordinator going up against Miami, do it until they prove they can stop it or at least slow it down. Yep. So I think I think Miami's going to have to make some adjustments, look for some personnel changes in there. Yep. If if Kiko Alonso is un, not as fortunate yep. as you were when you had you know surgery on your thumb and isn't effective or can't play, somebody has to step yeah. up. It's going to be Mike Hall. It's going to be you know a mixture of singer, guys. It's going to be yeah. Mel Hewitt, whoever. It's going to get the opportunity <clears throat> out there. Uh, Twitter. What's the one hole on the team that needs immediate fixing in next year's draft, John? What do you think? Linebacker. Yep, I'm I with think, you right I there. I think the Miami Dolphins. <clears throat> need to find a young linebacker in the draft early in the draft. Yes. And I think they missed out on that two years ago where they would have had a guy that was going into his third season now. Um, but I, I do think that that would be the position of yeah. need. There's no question in my mind. You need They need a, they need a, a, a big-time impact playing linebacker. And that means if you got to take him in the first round. Take him. Take him in the first round because that, that to me, is the biggest – look, safety is an issue, a little bit of an issue – but you got Rashad coming back, and Caduce is, is playing. He's getting a lot of reps and, and doing we well. We need a difference you, maker. You got corners. You got position. corners out there that you know Lippitz played well. Uh, you got Xavier Howard's going to be back. Right. So, to, so to me, the, the, the clear spotlight needs to be on a linebacker that can make impact plays um, as a pass rusher, as a pass defender, and certainly as a run stopper. I could not agree more, and I, I think that. That's the most glaring spot, offense, defense, special teams, that the Miami Dolphins have to find a guy that patrols the middle that people do not want to run in there and they don't want to throw it in there. Yep. A, an athletic guy that can play for you know at least four or five, six seasons at a level where you don't have to look and shop yep. to replace him. Yeah, you look at you look at Khalil Mack. Uh, you know, look at the Raiders and what they've done. Look at the way he played. They yes, move and, him around, and, and he's and that's a the terror. kind and that's the kind of guy. I mean, yeah. that's that's you know that's the, the you know that's the that's a template you're looking for. Yeah, that's for. a template you're looking for, no doubt about it. Uh, at Eric O'Fong, why do we always start slow on offense? That's a pretty good question. You know, this team this team has has been a slow starting football team from really from week one in yeah. the in the season. I mean, when when I can't I can't. I can't jump on them. I can't think of a game where they jumped out ahead of somebody and made someone play catch up the whole game, whole game long. No, you're right. You're right. I, I don't know what that answer is. Yeah. I, Adam Gase seems like he's tried a number of different things in changing up uh, his play calling list and maybe shortening that roster to yep. get to plays that Ryan Tannehill likes or get to plays that the Miami Dolphins can protect. You know, you've noticed over the past two weeks, they the first series, they went with that tight end across the back mm-hmm. end of the uh, line of scrimmage. They get a high-low stretch. They've been very productive. They didn't take the cheap one. They went downfield and yep. got Sims for 18 yards early in the game. I, I'm looking for more of that to play off of Jay Ajayi running the football and more play action to take uh, chances down the field. But uh, I for me, it's all about if they can stay in those good situations on first and second down, that offense can has a better chance of converting on third and staying on the field and not getting the opportunity on third downs in that first or second drive. They're getting big yardage on first yep. and second. And they got you know they got to stop shooting themselves in the foot too. Their, their penalties have been down the last couple of weeks, but but still the the but the penalties that have the hurt timing of the, the timing of the penalties for this team all season long has really been really been tough. It's really put them in tough situations defensively, whether you jump off sides and give a team first and five. Offensively, whether you complete a pass for a first down and you get the holding penalty or whatever. Right. I mean that's that's been a that has been a, a thorn in the side of this football team. I think it'll help too, Bo, with Brandon Albert coming back. Now yeah. he knows he's confident yeah. on the way he could play with his wrist injury. Tunsil coming back, you know, the shoulders bothering him, but at least he got the play. Yep. I, I think they'll be better in week two coming off of injuries. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. It takes a little time for these guys to get come back. That especially like you said, especially with Brandon, you know, trying to tr- trust. They got to trust that wrist. One of the best in the and, game. And, and Tunsil yeah. having to tr- uh, trust, you know, trust that shoulder. You know, when you got an injury, that's the one thing you got to get trust in it that you can play with it and and then go. Last question. Uh, all I want for this is I got game in New Jersey. All I want for Christmas is to get back to the playoffs just one time. Well, I'm gonna be a little more greedy than you. I'm not saying just one time. This team needs to get back to the playoffs and then become a perennial playoff football team. That's what this fan base wants. That's what this organization wants. That's what everybody inside this building wants. And and I think they're I think they're headed in that direction. Whether this year is a start to it, I don't know. But overall, I, I, I like the direction that the franchise is moving in right now. With the way the Dolphins started the 2016 season at 1-4, and four, 
to even be in a position yeah. to come into the month of December losing a game to start the month and still have a, a chance to talk about the playoffs if they can run out and win three or four and maybe they can win all four uh they have a chance and you're right that's that sets the 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 plate for 2017 2018 yep. and, and Adam Gase's plan and, and trying to get you know creative on draft picks get creative in free agency build this team on what they do well and build around it and have a new regime come in. I, I think you couldn't ask for a better opportunity in the year number one in the month of December to set the tone for the rest uh, of his uh, realm at, at head coach. John, I, I got to say, <clears throat> I'm glad this one's over. Well, yeah, this was not This pretty. was a hard day. It was a tough day. Yes, it was a tough day for the football team. And uh, I know for the fans out there, high expectations. And you kind of feel you like everyone else felt like you got punched in the gut with this one. We all got punched in the gut. And so, you know what? We're back, at, we're back Wednesday. Wednesday, we'll start looking ahead to the Arizona Cardinals. Forget about this disaster that we just went through and uh, and try to look for bigger and better things on Sunday. John, always a pleasure, my Thank man. You, buddy. John Kajemi, Kimbo it. Camper. Stick with us again. We'll be back uh, Wednesday at about 4.30 or whenever Leon can get things working. Yeah, probably. We'll, we'll be on around on that time, schedule, somewhere right? around there, yeah. whenever his schedule allows him to get here and, and get things going. We'll be back. We'll see you then. Take care.